I've just learned a horrible, hideous fact. Birds, now get this, birds do not sing because they are happy. The next time you hear a thrush singing, don't go all romantic, because what the thrush is doing is warning all the other birds to stay the heck off his branch and keep out of his nest. This news has depressed me terribly, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the reason I'm in Stevenage. I've been waiting for you. Well, how do you do? Good morning, sir. Sorry to keep you waiting. It's all right. Now, can I help you, sir? Yes, I'd like a room with a bath, if possible. Oh, no, I haven't. Uh, I can give you room number seven, though. The bathroom's just across the hall. Seven was always my lucky number. And uh, your name, sir? Templar, Simon Templar. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be comfortable here, sir. Oh, it's fine. Lunch is served from 12 noon till 2 o'clock. The dining room is just off the lobby. Will you be staying long, Mr. Templar? Uh, it depends. Thank you. Thank you, sir. followed. Can you meet me out of town? Yes, where? I drive north about a mile out of town. There's a pub called the Red Lion. Red Lion? Yeah, about 200 yards further on. There's a bus stop on the left-hand side of the road. I'll meet you there in about 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Fine. Bus stop on the left. Templar. Madison. I'm sorry about all this spy thriller atmosphere. Well, that's all right. To be frank, I... Well, I'm scared. Why don't you start at the beginning? Before I do that, will you promise me one thing? Go ahead. If... Well, if anything happens to me, my wife just thinks I'm a plain, simple electrical engineer. If she ever found out the truth... If I can possibly cover for you, I will. Thanks. I happen to be a very weak man. And a stupid one. It started about... Ten months ago, I'd been gambling and I lost a lot of money. About two years' salary, as a matter of fact. I was asked for the copy of a blueprint. The electronic component wasn't particularly vital or, or secret. I went along. Good morning, sir. Can I help you? Yes, you can. I've come to report a murder. 
Where did it happen? A mile out of town. There's a man named Matson with three bullets in him. He was shot by two men in a passing truck. Detective Inspector Kinglake, please. Henry Stephen Matson, 25 Russell Road. You better go up there and bring the news to his wife. Yes, sir. This is your coat, I believe. Yes, thanks. Templar, why did you choose this particular place to meet Mr. Matson? I didn't. He did. Rather remote, isn't it? He was being followed. Who by? I don't know. He was a very frightened man. And you've no idea what it was he wanted to discuss with you? I'm afraid he got shot before he could say much. I see. Well, I'd like you to come back to the station and make a statement. Shall we go in your car? Certainly. How well did you know Matson? I never saw him in my life before today. And then why were you meeting him? Well, he telephoned me in London three days ago. Oh, uh, just uh, out of the blue. I uh, do have a certain reputation. Yeah, you have. Go on. Well, he said he was involved in something too big for him to handle alone. He said he was scared. What? He wouldn't say. I told him to go to the police. He said he couldn't. And before I could hang up, he started crying. You mean literally? Sobbing. I realized he must be desperate. So I agreed to meet him here in Stevenage today. Before he could tell me anything, he died. Mm. Oh, uh, turn left to the next lot. I have been here before, remember. Mr. Templer, from what I've read about you, your private life has a way of becoming a public problem. As far as I know, there are no charges against you at this moment. That's right, there aren't. But there are a few policemen that start leading with their chins as soon as they see me. Mm. I'm an exception. I'm glad. Mr. Templer's statement's finished, sir. Well, your story sounds straight so far. Or it would do if anybody else had told it. Uh, would you mind signing this, please? With pleasure. Oh, and by the way, um, while you're in Stevenage, don't give me any trouble. I never give anybody any trouble. Unless they ask for it. Where are you staying? The Cromwell. For how long? Well, that depends. I have a number of things to do. For instance? Well, firstly, I must see Mrs. Matson. What about? Well, Kinglake, it's obvious. After all, I was with her husband when he was shot. I must naturally offer my condolences. All right, Templar. But remember this. I am in charge of this case, not you. I will remember. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sergeant. What do you think of him, Lashbrook? Oh, I like him, sir. Oh, well, there's no accounting for taste. Mr. Templer, I don't want to talk about it. Mrs. Matson. I know this has been a terrible shock. I don't want to intrude. Then don't! But I do think I can help you. You can, by leaving me alone. Mrs. Madsen, did you know I was with your husband because he asked to meet me? No, I didn't. He said he wanted to talk to me. What about? I'm not sure. Have you ever heard of a man named Maris? Maris? No, I, I don't think so. Why? Your husband was afraid of him. I don't think Henry was ever afraid of anybody. He didn't have any enemies then? No. Oh, I suppose there were people who were jealous of him. He was a brilliant engineer. Was he gambling? No. Are you sure? It was her fault. Whose fault? Whose fault? Mr. Templer, I don't want to discuss it. Was it back to Bamoff? <gasps> Suspected. Please tell me. About ten months ago, Henry began getting phone calls. Short, mysterious calls that he wouldn't talk about. He'd say yes and no a few times and then hang up. When I asked questions, he'd say it was business and change the subject. The calls always came at the same time, a few minutes before dinner. Without fail, as soon as he'd eaten, he'd say he was going down to the local for a few pints. You didn't believe him? After it happened a few times, I began to get suspicious. One night, I answered the phone. 
It was a woman. I asked Henry who she was. And he said it was one of the girls from the plant. Well, it wasn't. How did you know? I knew Henry well enough to be able to tell when he was lying. I went to every pub in town that night. He wasn't in any of them. He went to a place called the Blue Goose. I saw a car parked outside. Did you go in? No. It, it's a membership place. Besides, I, I was too embarrassed. I, I didn't want to see him with her. I can't face those sort of scenes. No, I, I just came home. He worked for Watford Williams Limited, didn't he? Yes. He went there right from university. It was the only job he ever had. Mr. Templer, why? Why did this happen? I'm afraid I don't know, Mrs. Manson. But I promise you I'm going to find out. I'll see myself out. And thank you for letting me see you. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I have an appointment with Mr. Gower at 2.30. Name, please? Simon Templer. May I see some identification, sir? Driving license, too? Yes, sir. Matson, one of our most brilliant engineers. Been with this firm for years. In what department? He, uh, he designs the electronic components for guidance systems in ballistic missiles. Very important job. Very. And top secret, of course. Absolutely. With access to classified information. But of course, blueprints, sketches. Could he have taken any of these home with him? Quite impossible. Every classified paper is checked in and out with two witnesses. Could he have photographed them? Templar. Are you suggesting that there is a security leak in Watford Williams? I'm not suggesting anything, Mr. Gower. I'm just asking questions. How would you describe Matson? Quiet, unassuming, almost shy, I'd say. Look here, Templar, just exactly what is all this? You'd speak as though Henry were a security risk. Has the fact that Henry hasn't come into the plant today anything to do with all these questions? Very much so, Mr. Gower. I'm afraid he's dead. <laughs> Okay. Maris isn't gonna like it.
good evening, sir. Could you tell me your name, please? Yes, it's Templar, Simon Templar. Are you a member, Mr. Templar? No, but I have a large expense account to justify. I'm sure you can arrange it. Of course, Mr. Templar. Please make yourself at home. I will. Good evening, sir. Good evening. What may I get you? A uh, whiskey and soda, please. Sir. Oh, Barman, do you by any chance know Miss Magda Varmo? I'm Magda Varmo. I'm sorry I didn't catch your name. It's uh, Simon Templer. Is anything wrong, Mr. Templer? No, no, it's just the altitude here puts bubbles in my blood. <laughs> you say when, sir? Uh, I'll do it, thank you. Would you like to buy me a drink? I'll buy you the club. <laughs> the usual, Joe. Why were you asking for me? A friend mentioned your name. Oh, a friend. I have a great many friends, Mr. Templer. Which one? Henry Matson. Oh, yes, Henry. Have you seen him recently? Yes, I think he was here last night. Oh, have you a cigarette? For you? Anything. You're charming. Not really. It's just that I'm interested in women who are old enough to have had a little experience and young enough to want a little more. <laughs> to luck. And to a long evening. Are you a gambling man, Mr. Templer? Don't I look it? Oh, would you like to play, sir? Have a place? Mm -hmm. Two hundred. You know about Henry Madsen. Why should I know anything about him? Banker, I've been around too long to go along with the gag of treating you as an ingenue. Banker, your name was on dear Henry's lips when he passed away this afternoon. Henry is dead? Three bullets. Very effective. How did you meet Henry? The way I met you, the way I meet many men. Was he a gambler? Yes, but not a very good one. Meaning he lost? Yes. What do you know about a man named Maris? Maris? I get it. Maris is the man that everybody talks about, but nobody knows. Sorry. Wow. Looks like I'm on a winning streak. Let's hope it stays that way. Thank you for driving me home. It's been my pleasure. And I've enjoyed the evening. Tell me, Magda, are all the games of the Blue Goose on the level? <laughs> you won this evening. Yes, there can be exceptions, sir. Especially if somebody wanted Matson to get heavily in debt. Why should anybody want that? Well, let's look at it this way. If you owed me, say, four or five thousand pounds, I could make some pretty fancy demands. Did Henry owe that much? It's a pretty accurate guess. <laughs> well, some men are born losers. I suppose so. Would you like to come in for a nightcap? Takes every ounce of willpower. But no. Another time? Soon. Very. Simon, I don't know what you're looking for at the Blue Goose. But if it isn't something you want very much, don't look for it. Magda, I never look for things I don't want. Be careful. You might get hurt. Why should you be hurt? You wanted me, sir. Yes. Do you mind telling me your name? James Andrew Robert McTavish, sir. At your service. Where are you from? In Clark Manninshire. Oh, Mr. McTavish of Clack Manonshire, how would you like to earn yourself five pounds legally? Very interested, sir. Would you put this in the personal column of all London newspapers? Would any friend or enemy of a man named Maris contact Simon Templar at the Cromwell Hotel Stevenage, where he or she will hear something to their advantage? Telephone Stevenage 3482. Phone it in. <laughs> right away, sir. Templar, oh, you good morning, Kingley. Templar, you promised me yesterday you wouldn't give me any trouble. And well, I haven't. 
Like a cup of coffee? No, thank you. You've been all over town. About a pot of tea? No. You've been all over town asking questions about Henry Matson. You went out to Watford Williams Limited and talked to his boss. Why, well, my king, like you do get around, don't you? Then you ended up at the Blue Goose and spent the evening with Magda Vamoff. Ah, Magda. Lovely girl. Would you like a cup of hot chocolate? Templar, I'm not questioning your right to go well, anywhere you want to or to. You. But I will not tolerate interference. You're quite right. This coffee is terrible. You hear this? I will not tolerate interference. Kinglake, a man asked me for help and got murdered. So I have a moral obligation to follow through. I must admit the trail is pretty murky. There's Magda, the Blue Goose, a man named Maris, and Mrs. Matson. I'm sorry, Kinglake, but I'm going to keep at it. Templar, get this. I won't have you playing amateur detective. I wouldn't dream of playing amateur detective. Good. I'll leave that to you. Mr. Templer, I... Uh, no, thank you. May I? Of course. Mr. Templer, I, I asked you to come here today because I've thought things over. I wasn't honest with you yesterday. You weren't? No. There's more behind Henry's death than a woman and some gambling debts. Oh, what? I think he was... he was doing something against the law. In what way? Henry designed electronic components for the guidance system in missiles. Yes, I know. I can hardly bear to say this, but... I think he was tricked into this gambling business. Then, when he lost enough, they offered him a way out. I think his debts were cancelled for information. Do you have any proof? I found an IOU in his wallet. It was made payable to the Blue Goose, and on it was Henry's signature. It was for 600 pounds, and stamped across it were the words, Payment Received. Mr. Templer, that debt wasn't paid with money. I know. I'm sorry, Mrs. Matz. It's true, isn't it? Mr. Templer, don't try to protect me. I've got to know the truth. Yes, it is true. Henry was a traitor. I'm afraid so. How? Why? What happened to him? That's what he wanted to tell me. Why couldn't he have told me? Because he loved you, Mrs. Matson. He was ashamed of what he was doing. So he wanted to expose the whole operation. That's why he asked me for my help. But he's still going to get it. to see me? A little. I was out shopping. I thought I would find out if you were in. You weren't waiting, then. <laughs> Darling, I never wait for a man. You like to have dinner with me? I'd love to. Where would you like to go? My place. An intimate domestic evening. You like Hungarian food? I love it. What time do you want me? About seven. I have to be at the Blue Goose at ten. Seven it is, then. All right. I'll see you later. Uh, James Andrew, any messages for me? Uh, no, sir. How about my ad? Well, you're in the late editions of the London papers tonight. The rest tomorrow. Good, thanks. You're welcome, Mr. Templer. You know, James Andrew is all a little too pat. Why would Magda Bamoff suddenly decide to ask me for dinner? Well... Not to be familiar, Mr. Templer, but if she asked me, I wouldn't care about her reasons. Got a present for you. Who for? Templer. It's got to be put in something he eats or drinks, and black. All right, all right. I do it. But these things are not as easy as Maris thinks. He's getting impatient. This time, no slip up. It smells great. It's the herbs that make the difference. 
Actually, I'd throw in everything I have in the kitchen. Not too much for a start. That's fine. Thank you. Taste it. No, I'll wait for you. I want to know if you approve. Superb. I'm so glad you like it. Ah, tell me about yourself. Where are you from? Budapest. And your parents? Well, my father was a doctor, a very respected one. My mother was, well, how shall I say, Hungarian. They adored each other. So in all, you had a happy childhood. Mm, it is good. Yes, very. I came in England in 1955 to learn the language. 1955? You got out just before the uprising. Yes. I was one of the lucky ones. How did you get the job at the Blue Goose? A friend. Named Maris. Maris, Maris. I don't know any Maris. Do that again. Do what? Flutter your eyelashes. It's standard procedure when you're lying. Simon, darling, I never tell you a lie. Magda, darling, you have not uttered one word of truth since we met. Well, if you don't like it, you know what you can do. Hello? Hello? It's for you, some man with a foreign accent. Thank you. Hello? You asked me to call you if there were any messages, Mr. Templar. Oh, McTavish. Well, a telegram just came in for you. Well, open it. Oh, oh, okay. Ho hold on a moment. Hello? It says, I know Maris and I want to talk. I'll be at your hotel at 11 tonight. And it's signed, Nick Vachetti. Well, thanks, James Andrew. Have him wait in my room when he gets there, will you? Put a bottle of scotch in, too. Fine, thanks. Well, what was that all about? Well, just an experiment. When I'm desperate, I usually invite the ungodly to step forward and identify themselves. Can I help you, sir? Which room is Mr. Templer? Well, you must be Mr. Vachetti. So, what? Oh, well, uh, Mr. Templer's out at the moment, but uh, he's expecting you. I'll show you up to his room. should be back any minute. Okay. Uh, well, make yourself comfortable. Thanks. Oh, 
Mr. Fischetti arrived a minute ago, sir. Where is he? In your room, sir. Thank you, James Andrew. You're a very reliable man. Thank you, sir. Templar. You Fischetti? Yeah. I, uh... I seen your ad. What made you answer it? Well, I'd rather talk to you than to the police. Uh, also, I want out. I read about Matson's killing. That captured him. I'm through. Where's Maris? He's a very dangerous man. But uh, not so fast, Jack. Let's... Let's talk first. All right. Where do you fit in? Well, I've done time here in England, Dartmoor. When I came out, a fella called Blatt was waiting for me. He told me that I could make some easy dough. Doing what? Carrying packages. I got a room here in, uh, in Stevenage, and uh, I used to check in at the Blue Goose every day. Now, every once in a while, this, uh, this Blatt would give me a package to take to a, a Mr. Smith in Liverpool or an envelope for Mr. Brown in a hotel in London. What else? 45 quid a week it was a cinch. You knew, of course, you were doing something illegal. The ex-cons don't ask questions. But one day I got curious. And I, uh, I opened one of the envelopes. There was a blueprint inside. And a lot of writing. In Russian or German. So I figured I got mixed up in a spy ring. And I got scared. So? So I started to keep a record. Of what? Well, the places I've been. Names and addresses of these guys and the uh, description of what they look like. How many names? The last count, 31. Could I uh, have a drink? I'm sorry, of course. 31 names is uh, quite a haul. Yeah, I wrote them all down in a little book. Books for sale. How much? My fare back to Canada, a little over. 500 pounds. Water or soda? Uh, water. Where's the list now? Uh, it's here in Stevenage. It's in my room. Okay. I'll buy it. Thanks. But for Shetty, there's a catch. It's only fair to warn you that I shall turn the list over to the authorities. You give me 48 hours first to get out of England. Okay. When can I have it? As soon as you have 500 pounds. You come here tomorrow, I'll have the money. That's a, that's a deal. Hey, what, what, what? It's poison. You were right. Maris is dangerous. Templar? Look, it's me, Nick Machetti. When I got back, my joint had been broken into. The book's gone. Gone? Well, can you remember any of the names that were in it? But, yeah, I, I can remember some of the names and addresses, but not all. Listen, I, I figured they knew, and I... Hello, Nick. Well, what do you want? Nick, what names and what addresses? Oh... Nothing, just some friends of mine. Oh. He has friends. Isn't that nice? Very nice. Looks as if you've had some trouble tonight. Oh, yeah, when I, uh, when I got back, my uh, place here broken into. Anything missing? No, I, I don't think so. Nick, I ask you once again, what names and what addresses? Just a book of names and addresses. It's friends. 
You know, I, I get around quite a bit, and I like to keep in touch with the people I meet. That's all. Black, what's the big idea? You got no right to, to, to come in here. No, Shetty. Maris has known for some time that you were uh, unreliable. He's had a few reports of envelopes and parcels that have been tampered with. No, not by me, Black. Honest. I never touched nothing. You had an envelope for Parma in Charrington Street two weeks ago. Parma examined it under a microscope. It had been steamed open and then restuck with rubber cement. Very clumsily, very stupidly. That points to you. I never done nothing that Maris didn't tell me to do. I done every. and see what happens. Temper, I warned you. I told you I wouldn't stand for any interference. I'm going to hold you on suspicion. Suspicion? Suspicion of what? Probably of murder. Now, that'd be ridiculous, King Lake. You don't have any grounds. Haven't I? Pachetti was with you tonight in your hotel room between 11 and 11.30. You are now here in his room with his body. If you don't think that's enough grounds, well, you're wrong. Come on. King Lake, you're really determined to be difficult, aren't you? Very difficult. Take over. Yes, sir. Templar. That's not enough. Maris wants him dead. Sit down. I believe I'm entitled to a phone call. Or better still, you make it for me. Well, I beg your pardon. Wyvern 9400. The war office? Mm hmm. Ask for a man named Richardson. W. F. Richardson. Templar, are you trying to. I'm not bluffing, King Lake. And believe me, You'll only save yourself more grief later on. When you get him, tell him you're holding me on suspicion of murder. Ask him about the Blue Goose. Go on. Wyvern, 9400. Two, Joe. What's the matter? Everything. Why, what happened? I'll tell you when I spoke to Maris. Of course, Mr. Richardson, I understand. Yes, I'll give Mr. Templer every possible cooperation. I see, sir. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, why didn't you tell me this before? I didn't know enough about you. In a town like this, it doesn't take long for one man's secret to become every man's rumor. Can you trust me now? Vachetti had a list with 31 names and addresses. The entire cell. We get that list, we smash the ring. How do you suppose they knew Vachetti had the list? They're not amateurs. They work for GIU. What's that? They're Chief Intelligent Administration. They come under Department 4, I think, that deals solely with information relating to new weapons. Weapons? That explains Manson. Mm-hmm. He seems such a solid sort of chap. It's hard to understand how he got involved. It's hard to understand any of them. Yeah. Well, what do we do now? Tonight, we get Maris. He's the head of the cell. <laughs> Excuse me. 
Good evening, Mr. Templer. Good evening. Is Miss Farmer for around? Oh, she's at the gaming table. Would you tell her I'd like to see her, please? Certainly, sir. Mr. Templer's in the bar. He wants to speak to you. Keep him busy. Take my own place. Soda or water, sir? Nothing, thanks. I didn't expect to see you here tonight. I didn't expect to be here tonight. Oh. No, I was planning on curling up in bed with a good book. A notebook. It belonged to a friend of mine who has given up reading. Given up? As he was shot. Pachetti. Only two bullets this time. The usual, Miss Bama? Oh, no, no, I'm not drinking tonight. You're in this right up to your pretty little neck, aren't you? Yes, but not the way you think. Feel better, Mr. Templer? Maris. Yes. Should have known. The man nobody sees because nobody looks at a bartender. You were arrested tonight and released within 20 minutes. Why? The police like me. Have you any official connection with Scotland Yard Special Branch or MI5? Blatt. Maris, don't. Why, if I may ask, if you care? I don't. Templar, I promise you, unless you talk, you will be shot. Now, what do you know? I know plenty. For a start, you're the head man. You work under GRU Department 4. The infection spreads out all over England from the Blue Goose. Go on. Madsen's a good example. Magda starts him gambling. He loses heavily. Then you ask him for something. A blueprint, a photostat. With others, it's different. A work slowdown here, a strike there. Individually, the incidents are trivial. The sum total is deadly. You made a deal with Vachetti, didn't you? Your people soften up quicker than you think. And Vachetti agreed to give you a list of names and addresses. I want that list, Mr. Templer. I'm sure you do. Where is it? In the mail to MI5. Mr. Templar, I'm too old for this sort of thing. I'll give you five seconds to tell the truth. One. Please don't. Two. Three. Four. I am not playing games, Mr. Templar. In one second, you will be dead. Where is that list? I have it. You? Yes. How did you get it? I knew Vachetti was going to Templar's hotel, and while he was out, You I... went to Vachetti's house? Yes. The night before Vachetti planned to sell that list to Templar? Well, I... I was getting suspicious of him, and... Liar! You knew all along about that list, didn't you? Answer me! Yes! Simon, before they kill us, I want you to know the truth. Yes, I work for Maris, but only so that I can destroy him. Go on. I've been planning this for weeks. After the revolution, my family were imprisoned. He promised me that if I cooperated with him, he would have them brought to England. Magda, let me tell you something about your parents. Yes, I know. They've been dead for three years. I only found out five months ago from a refugee. They died in prison. I only went on working for him so that I could bring enough evidence to put them, all of them, where they belong. <laughs> The list! Tell him, Magdory, 
he'll kill you. It's upstairs in the big vase of roses in the gambling room. It had better be. Get something to get my hands free. Temple and the girl, downstairs. In the chair, Templar. organization wrecked by some ham-handed policeman. Get this. You are coming downstairs with me now, and unless you... <laughs> Don't move! Sorry, Templar, we're too late. Why? Before I could stop him, he burned the list. It looks as though we failed. Simon, are you taking me to that man Richardson in London? Agra, I have no choice. But they'll never know that Mary's found out about me. I mean, I could go away, then I could move in somewhere else, this time on your side. We'll be up to Richardson. Do you think it would affect his decision if he found out that I know every name and address on this list by heart? <laughs> 